So let's dive in and talk a little bit about why you might want to think about returning to Canada um, for your education. Some of you might be really familiar with Canada and Canadian education. Others might have citizenship through their parents and maybe have never lived in Canada or maybe even never visited Canada. So we're including some background information here um, just to make sure everyone has that foundation of what Canadian education looks like. Um, so with that, we can get started. Um, one of the main reasons why students often choose to study in Canada is really the recognized high quality of life that you find here. We're a really welcoming country and embrace the diversity and multiculturalism of everyone who lives here. Canada consistently ranks among the best countries in the world for our safety, economic and political stability, healthcare system, our education system, and of course, lots more. All of this makes us a really welcome destination for students like yourselves returning to Canada, as well as international students and thousands of immigrants that choose to move to Canada each year. Other notable features about Canada include a really diverse landscapes and community options for students to choose from, really from urban to rural. Um, it's a large country and can take upwards of six hours to fly from Vancouver on the west coast to Halifax on the east coast. You'll also find that our major metropolitan cities are mixed in with really beautiful geography from the Rocky Mountains, Canadian prairies to our three ocean coastlines. Canada really covers a variety to suit whatever it is that you're looking for. And yes, there are four seasons of weather in most parts of Canada, which means you'll usually have hot, sunny weather in the summer and some cold, snowy temperatures in the winter with everything in between. That in between part is my favorite and pretty excited to be moving into fall right now. As I mentioned earlier, the quality of our education system is one of the main reasons students choose to return to Canada to study. The majority of our post-secondary institutions are public, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD. Canada is one of only a handful of countries that has above average spending for education, and specifically post-secondary education, where we spend more than 2% of our GDP. Because of this, we can ensure that our 96 public universities and 127 public colleges offer the highest quality of education to our students. For today, we're really going to focus on universities. Canadian university degrees are really well recognized internationally, and many of our universities consistently appear in the top 50, top 100, and top 200 of universities around the world. Our graduates are well represented at top graduate schools and professional programs all around the world. And 96% of graduates would recommend Canada as a destination to others. I always like that stat in there too. Our universities in Canada offer safe and diverse communities and safe and diverse campuses. With fewer institutions across Canada, it also means that our institutions tend to be a little bit larger than you might expect in some other countries. A small university campus in Canada is generally between four and 6,000 students. A mid-sized university is usually around 10 to 15,000 students. And then a large university campus could have 25,000 or 30,000 or more students. Within um, the system with the types of institutions you see outlined on screen, our universities tend to fall into one of the three categories there. So for those medical, doctoral, research universities, U of T is a great example of that kind of institution. For comprehensive universities, the University of Waterloo is a great example. And for the primarily undergraduate institutions, Bishop's University in Quebec would be an example of that kind of, um, of institution. And a really exciting aspect of studying in Canada is that our students aren't restricted to particular pathways. Once students get into university, there's a lot of flexibility in the types of courses and programs that students can opt to enroll in. You can combine different programs together in one degree. And the nice part is that you don't have to choose those programs right away in most cases. Students usually have at least one full year to determine which specific majors or minors they would like to pursue. And there are many interdisciplinary options for students and they usually apply to a faculty or a school, or in some cases, a broader degree program, rather than applying undeclared or to a specific program. Now, our degrees in Canada tend to be pretty rigorous as students are coming from high school with a high level of education. 
Canadian secondary education curricula are standardized in each province. So our students are well prepared in specific prerequisite courses for successful advancement in university. Uh, the equivalent of that is what we'll be looking for for anyone from applying from outside of Canada. So for example, students looking to study business and sciences in particular are expected to have strong competency in mathematics and then sometimes physical sciences. This means that in some cases, students will typically have two years of physics and two years of chemistry in high school if they plan on going into a science program, and certainly four years of math that includes some pretty advanced math with calculus um, as part of it. Now, hands-on learning is one of the most popular aspects of a Canadian post-secondary curriculum, and many institutions offer different ways for students to gain valuable experience while they're studying. These include paid for credit work opportunities that are related to a degree program, as well as undergraduate research opportunities and study abroad programs. There are also work study programs and dedicated career-related support systems on campus. In terms of tuition and what you might be expected to pay as Canadian citizens or dependents of Canadian citizens, you will be eligible for the Canadian rather than the international tuition at U of T and at all Ontario universities. There is no requirement to have residency in Canada or Ontario to be eligible for this domestic tuition. There are a number of additional exemptions from international fees. And if you need more information, our student account site has some really great details. So maybe we'll get that link shared in the chat for you too. Um, and I can do that actually. Um, as our education in Canada is governed by the provinces and territories in Canada, if you're looking at universities outside of Ontario, you'll probably want to check their specific guidelines as well. So with that kind of study in Canada overview, we're going to shift gears and I'll invite Maria back on screen, there she is, um, to give you a quick overview of one of Canada's best universities, the University of Toronto. So Maria, it is all yours. Perfect. Thanks so much, Emily, for that wonderful overview of studying in Canada. As Emily mentioned, we will be shifting gears and I'll be giving you a very quick overview of one of Canada's best universities, which is, of course, the University of Toronto. Uh, we're going to simplify U of T for you and give you three main takeaways from this presentation. So you will learn that U of T is Canada's flagship research university. U of T is a network of unique communities in the heart of one of the most dynamic regions in the world. And U of T students can mix and match programs and experiences to build personalized degrees. So everything in this section will reflect these three key takeaways, both uh, about U of T. Um, so let's get started. So as I mentioned, the University of Toronto is Canada's number one university and Canada's flagship university for research and discovery. Our students and faculty don't just teach and learn, they redraw the boundaries of what there is to learn. We have an incredible reputation for academic strength, leadership in every discipline, and the cutting edge work we do in the lab, in the studio, and in the field. It's, it's no wonder then that we're not just Canada's best university, we are one of the world's best universities. And when you graduate with a U of T degree, you can take it anywhere and be sure that any employer will be impressed. A U of T diploma is a globally recognized mark of quality and versatility, and a big part of why we have alumni living and working in 190 countries. We're ranked in the world's top 20 year after year, in part because our campuses attract the best and brightest from all over the world. A lot of people know that insulin was discovered at U of T, but did you know that stem cell research started here too? The world's, the world's first nerve transplant, the world's first electronic pacemaker, and the world's first treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. These are just a few examples of the many contributions that we've made. We've also produced Oscar winners, Olympic athletes, prime ministers, Nobel laureates, best-selling authors like Ma Margaret, Atwood, Ma Margaret Atwood and Malcolm Gladwell. Now, the second takeaway is that U of T is a network of unique communities in the heart of one of the most dynamic regions in the world. The BBC once ranked us the world's most diverse city. And while there are a lot of contenders, we're definitely up there. In fact, half of Toronto's population was born outside of Canada, 
and speaks languages other than English. The city is safe, clean, delicious, and has something for everyone to enjoy, including limitless opportunities to network, collaborate, and innovate. Did you know that Toronto is home to North America's second largest financial services district, second only to New York, or that Toronto's International Film Festival, or TIFF for short, rivals Cannes in prestige and influence? Anchored by the Toronto Stock Exchange and one of North America's largest design industries, the GTA is an economic powerhouse whose major industries include biotechnology, healthcare, fashion, and aerospace engineering. And not only are our campuses nestled in Canada's economic heartland, we're just a stone's throw away from world-class museums, restaurants, open air markets, parks, galleries, street festivals, and live music for every mood. Our central location has also made us Canada's largest university with nearly 200 academic departments and institutes and 10,000 courses, the, the country's largest selection, students have the advantage of choice. And one of the first choices you'll be making is which campus you'll want to study at because we have three amazing options for you. All three of our campuses are located within an hour of each other, offer the same top quality education and are self-contained. So when you graduate, you'll earn the same U of T degree. The campus you choose makes no difference. Each offers a distinct environment and has some unique features. So it's more of a matter of personality and fit. But remember, U of T is one fantastic university. We've got three campuses, but you'll receive the same diploma um, from all three. So let's take a quick look at each of these campuses. We'll start with U of T Mississauga, which is about half hour west of downtown Toronto. It's in the city of Mississauga, and it's a mid-sized campus with about 16,000 students. It's also located on 225 acres of gorgeous green space with trees, woodlands, and gardens. Most of the buildings are newly built, so it has a very modern feel. Now, U of T St. George, on the other hand, is filled with heritage architecture. It's U of T's founding campus, and that means it's right at the heart of downtown Toronto with 35,000 undergraduate students and a wonderful mix of Gothic buildings and brand new glass and steel towers and labs. Old and new, something for everyone, just steps away, uh, just steps from all that the city has to offer. Our third campus, U of T Scarborough, about half an hour east of downtown Toronto, is uh, the university's co-op campus with co-op programs in more than 45 fields across the arts, sciences, and business. A mid-sized campus with about 15,000 students, it's located on over 300 acres of Parkland um, in the Highland Creek Valley, complete with beautiful hiking trails. Much like UT Mississauga, UT Scarborough is home to many newly built facilities and state-of-the-art complexes, and the campus just continues to grow. Now, once you get to U of T, we want to ensure that you're happy and you're reaching your full potential. There are a lot of ways in which we support our students in achieving this. Things like academic success centers, learning strategists, peer mentors. Um, our professors also have office hours to meet with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The third and final takeaway that we mentioned at the beginning was the ability for U of T students to mix and match programs to really personalize and build their own degrees. So with over 700 program options, there are no shortage of opportunities. That is the best selection of programs in Canada. At U of T, many of our programs are available on all three campuses, allowing students the option to choose in which environment they want to study. Our programs are unique to a campus, or some programs rather are unique to a campus, so for example, the St. George campus offers over 50 language, 50 different languages in the arts. Forensic science is uh, unique to our Mississauga campus and journalism at our Scarborough campus. We also have the largest and highest ranked faculty of engineering in Canada with eight core programs you can apply to directly from high school, including chemical, civil, computer, electrical, industrial, mechanical, materials, and mineral engineering. 
We also have an, an undeclared first year called track one, where you can declare from the core eight after your first year. And lastly, we offer engineering science, which is an enriched program where students spend their first two years in high level multidisciplinary engineering courses. Now, our three remaining communities are built smaller in size and unique to the St. George campus. If you're looking for a strong foundation in design thinking or preparation for a career in architecture, interior design, or urban planning, our programs in architectural studies and visual studies might be for you. If you're leaning more toward physical therapy or sports medicine, you'll want to pursue kinesiology, the study of human movement through the hands-on curriculum that's packed with practicums, community placements, and field work. And is there a better place to study music than downtown Toronto? The Faculty of Music is U of T's smallest faculty, and it specializes in ensemble-based learning and weekly one-on-one -on -one instruction, where, you're, where you'll own in on your craft and uh, under dedicated faculty members on a very close-knit basis. Now, you will also have lots of opportunities to apply what you've done in the classroom to real world by participating in paid work placements through our co-op and co-op PEY programs to research opportunity programs. Students can also enjoy international experiences and take part in clubs as well as athletics. So now, Emily, I'll call you back on stage and we can go over the application process. Rish, we really were on stage and doing this in person. It'll be much more fun, <laughs> but thank you for, the, for a great overview. Um, so I really hope that um, Maria's U of T overview was, was really appealing to you and that makes you want to apply to U of T because the next section of our, our session today is really going to talk about how we actually get you here. Um, one of the important things to know, um, maybe the most important thing about applying to U of T is that the application is completed in two steps. The first step is an online application where you provide your contact information, academic history, and really tell us what you're interested in studying. Um, those applications should open in the next week or so, maybe even Monday. Um, the second step is where you submit all of your required documents. And we'll provide instructions on how to do that via our Join U of T applicant portal after we receive that initial application. So grades, all that information comes in a second step. In terms of specific admission requirements, everything is really based on your own academic performance in whichever high school system you are part of. Citizenship is not a factor in our admissions process. So for specific requirements based on where you study and prerequisites for different programs, we're gonna put a link in the chat so that you can look that up for your specific system. Um, but I did want to show you kind of a timeline of what this um, will look like. And typically in your grade 12, senior year, or otherwise your final year of high school. Um, admission decisions are typically released in ongoing rounds beginning in January and, and moving into the spring. So we always recommend that students apply early by about November 7th so that we can start considering you early in the process for those January and February rounds. And again, when you want to check the status of your application, you log right into your join portal to do that. Now, we're really pleased to offer a range of scholarships and varying values, and every applicant is automatically considered for these awards. No separate application is required, and typically an off a scholarship offer comes with the offer of admission. So you shouldn't have to wait too long to know if you're also going to get a scholarship if you're admitted. In terms of need-based financial aid, all Canadians, permanent residents, and protected persons are eligible for need-based financial aid through their home province. If you have never lived in Canada, then your financial aid home is the last province where you or your Canadian parent lived. Um, and if you are a dual citizen and might be eligible for aid from another jurisdiction, for example, the US, we always recommend applying for both programs just so that you keep your options open and find out what sorts of funding are available to you. So we've included some additional resources here to help you learn more about U of T and your other options in Canada. Um, I think we'll put these all into the chat so you don't have to worry about trying to write them down. And um, I will welcome Maria back on screen and we can take a couple of questions from the Q&A. Yeah, so we have uh, a few questions Question. that, um, oh, I thought I heard an echo there. Um, okay, so our first question is, do Canadian citizens from US schools need to apply using OUAC 105 application? That's a great question. 
Um, there are two applications you might be able to use um, as a Canadian citizen from a US school. Most, most people around the world, you could use the OUAC 105 application if you're looking to apply to other universities in the province of Ontario, or if you have ever studied in Canada. So if you studied in Canada in grade six or grade four, um, and then moved back somewhere else, you would still need to use that OUAC 105 application. And that one does give you three choices that you can use across the 22 universities in the province. The other option is the U of T international application. And even if you are a Canadian citizen, if you have never studied in Canada and don't plan to apply to other Ontario universities, I tend to recommend that you use that application because it's a little bit cheaper. So it saves you a little bit of money um, because it doesn't give you those other Ontario choices. So um, citizenship doesn't really matter on which application you use either. So that's a good question. Yeah, thank you. Now, our second question is, um, well, Aisha says, hey there, can I know as to how to apply as a student who has studied according to the British pattern and how can I check the prerequisites for the programs I'm interested in? Sure. Uh, maybe Lydia will put a link into the chat for the program search page, because that's probably the best place to look up specific prerequisites for, for your program of interest. Um, but students doing the British pattern system, completing A-levels or GCEs, um, will be looking for at least three A-levels or four AS levels if you're in a country where you might do AS, um, and at least five GCSE or IGCSE courses. Um, you'll always have to present English. This is for everyone, not just students in the British system. We'll always be looking for an English in the final year. But for students in the British pattern system, you could do that at IGCSE or at GCSE instead of AS or A-level. That that's still acceptable um, for an English course. And that's where, again, everyone's required to present an English course. Perfect. Um, Kareem's asking, what are co-op degrees? Oh. Great question. Co-op is where you have paid work terms as a part of your academic program. So at U of T, um, we mentioned, uh, Maria mentioned that U of T Scarborough is our co-op campus. And that is where um, we would host them. There's over 45 programs across art, science, and business where you could do two or three, or um, it's really no more than three, but uh, paid work terms as a part of your program. Um, you could even do, they're often four month terms, but you some cases you can combine them and do an eight month term or even a 12 month term in some cases too. And um, because our Scarborough campus operates on a trimester system, even if you do three co-op placements as a part of your program, you can still graduate within a four year timeline. Um, you don't have to, you can take a term off if you want, but you can if that's a priority for you. I hope that helps. Okay. So um, Emily, we'll take one more question. Um, even though we do have a few questions, um, we will uh, urge you to join us for our 4 p.m. Q&A um, because these are all really, really great questions and we do wanna answer them all. Um, but the last question we'll take for this session is, if you apply early in the year, such as October, but get denied very early, is it possible to apply again and be considered later on? Irene, mean, that's such a good question, and I'm really glad you asked it. We don't tend to make refusals early in the process. Those January and February rounds, we don't make refusals at that point. We normally just wait and see um, and wait for more grades to become available. So you submit more grades to us from throughout your final year of study, and then we consider you again in the subsequent rounds. Um, there might there are rare cases where we might make refusals. Often, if students like are not in grade 12 and are applying from grade 11 or aren't taking an English course in their final year. Um, there are things like that where we might make refusals, but otherwise we tend to wait and do those later on. So we, we avoid that whole scenario that you set up. Yeah, thank you, Emily. Actually, you know what, Emily, we have time for one more question. And Great, I think that there it. are a couple um, that kind of fall within the same line. So um, with regards to things like personal statements, SATs, APs, um, how do you recommend a student apply with that? Are they all necessary? Um, are they optional? Can you give a little bit of insight into that before we conclude, please? Yes, I would be happy to. For personal statements, it depends on the university and in most cases, the program. There are a couple Canadian universities that require a personal statement from every applicant. 
not very many and not us at U of T. We will only require supplemental applications from specific programs. And even then it's not really a personal statement. It's a specific supplemental application with specific questions that they'll be looking for you to answer. Um, in terms of SATs or ACTs, we uh, normally would require them from students in a US high school system. And um, so if you're graduating with US diploma, regardless of where you are in the world, we would normally require either SATs or ACTs, but um, we are test optional for, for last year and for this year for applying for 2022. So if you are a junior and you're in a US system, check back with us in the spring. We should have some updates then about whether that will be required next year. And if you are anywhere where you're not in a U.S. high school curriculum, then we really wouldn't consider SATs as a part of the consideration process. Um, I should also mention, if you're in a U.S. system and you're applying to engineering, if you have taken a test, they are probably going to ask for it. Um, if you haven't been able to, they'll absolutely work with you. But engineering is a little less test optional than the rest of the university. So that's kind of just a good thing to be aware of. And just one more thing about APs, are they recommended? Oh. Are there specific amounts that we're looking for? Perfect, thank you. I knew I missed something there. Um, for APs, you know, they're, they're a rigorous course. So if you're looking for, for taking a rigorous course load to make sure you're prepared for whatever program you want to go into, um, by all means, take a couple APs. Um, I don't tend to recommend students take a lot of APs because they tend students often are worried about not doing as well in the course because they are pretty challenging. So it's always a balancing act with those. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you. We don't have specific requirements for APs. I would say unless you're in a US system and you're applying to engineering, um, where they, they really will recommend AP Calculus, AP Chemistry, and AP Physics um, to really prepare you for that program. But um, otherwise, if you're in, in any other high school system, it's not a US system, we don't expect you to have APs because that's not built in as part of your curriculum and um, wouldn't be something we would require for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Em, for your no thorough yet concise responses. Of course, we 